Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. As the Information Officer for the Ministry of Home Affairs, I welcome you to today's press conference in regards to an organizational review that was recently done on the Cayman Islands Fire Service. I'd like to first start off by introducing our panel of government leaders who will lead today's press conference, starting with the Chief Officer for the Ministry of Financial Services and Home Affairs, Dr. Dax Basteo, followed by the Deputy Chief Officer for the Ministry of Financial Services and Home Affairs, Ms. Catherine Densbell Powell, and the Chief Fire Officer for the Cayman Islands Fire Service, Mr. David Hales. This morning's press conference will commence with remarks given by the Chief Officer on behalf of the Minister of Financial Services and Home Affairs, the Honorable Tara Rivers, who is unable to be with us today due to other ministry obligations. Remarks will then be heard by Chief Hales, and then the Q&A segment of this announcement will conclude this press conference. Now, I'd also like to add that following this press conference, a media release will be sent to all media representatives, and inside that media release, you will find a link that will take you to the direct page on the Cayman Islands Fire Service website, where you can find the report for your review. Now, without further ado, I now pass this press conference over to the Chief Officer to give his opening remarks. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. As the Chief Officer for the Ministry of Financial Services and Home Affairs, I welcome you to today's press conference as we announce the results of an organizational review conducted on the Cayman Islands Fire Service. Before I go further, I'd like to first note that the Minister of Financial Services and Home Affairs, um, the Honorable Tyra Rivers, is unable to join us this morning due to some other speaking engage engagements he has this morning. She apologizes for her absence, but would like for me to express her full support for these efforts to reform and improve the fire service. Minister Rivers also wanted to stress the importance of this initiative, which will allow the fire service to continue to its progress towards becoming a world-class organization. I'd also like to take this opportunity to recognize the foresight of the minister and her colleagues to approve a budget that will allow the fire service to implement these recommendations and to continue to improve its services. In June 2017, the Ministry commissioned PricewaterhouseCoopers to undertake the review to help develop an appropriate standard of operations for the domestic division of the fire service and to reshape the department's overall organizational structure. This comprehensive review encompassed feedback from both internal and external stakeholders and took nearly five months to complete. I would like to thank PwC team for their professionalism, diligence, and continued support of the last few weeks to assist with the roadmap for implementation. The review highlights four main areas that will be addressed. First will be the implementation of the United Kingdom National Occupational Standards. The fire service is committed to using these standards as a reference point when reviewing and developing qualifications for domestic operations. While the standard is already in use uh, for the aerodrome operations, incorporating these standards into domestic operations will provide clarity on training needs and build capability for the organization. Another key area of focus is developing a talent strategy for the fire service. This aspect of the plan will deal with issues such as recruitment, succession planning, and performance management. It is the aspect of the plan that will address the individual development of fire officers and will therefore take the longest to fully implement. The third area of focus will further evaluate the fire service processes and procedures. While somewhat linked to the implementation of the operational standards, this aspect of the plan looks at the administrative systems in place with the goal to improve efficiency and effectiveness. Finally, the fourth mainstream of work highlighted in the review, and which is already on the way, is the improvement of fire services facilities. The review indicates necessary repairs, upgrades, and replacements of facilities and equipment to ensure all essential functions of the fire service are carried out per established best practice. As we move into the implementation phase of this process, this work will form a vital part of the Deputy Governor's and this Ministry's long-term plan to develop a world-class fire service. The real work begins now and builds on Chief Hale's efforts to improve, modernize, and ensure a fit-for-purpose fire service that the officers and the community can continue to be proud of. Now, I know Chief Hale will speak to the details of the groundwork that has already begun. So with that, I thank you all again for your time and turn it over now to Chief Hale to tell you more about the progress that is being made. Chief Hale. Thank you, Chief Officer Bastille, for the introduction. And again, thank you all for being here today. 
I would like, first of all, to thank the Minister, um, the Honourable Tar Rivers, and all the Ministry leaders for their support and leadership throughout the entire process. As a first responder, it's crucial that the fire service is structured to meet its mandate, and I commend the Ministry for taking necessary steps to ensure that we have the plan and resources needed to establish a world-class fire service. The core role of the fire service is to provide an emergency response to domestic and aviation incidents throughout the Cayman Islands. Our fire officers often work under dangerous conditions and risk their own lives to ensure the safety of others. This organisational review gave those men and women an opportunity to voice their opinions. The review has also provided a blueprint for transformational change which is aimed at promoting a more efficient response to emergency incidents, as well as a continued focus on community safety and the welfare of the people of the Cayman Islands. Fire service personnel at all levels were given the opportunity to offer their feedback through a confidential survey and face-to-face -face interviews, to which 60% of the workforce responded. Several stakeholder engagement meetings were also held with allied agencies. In an effort to enhance services and ensure overall effectiveness, the fire service proactively began groundwork on several initiatives before the report began. A comprehensive plan for training and development against the UK Fire Rescue and National Occupational Standards commenced in November 2017, which will tie directly into the succession planning for the domestic unit. The fire service has deployed several fire officers at various locations abroad to receive training and further skills and development and also receive exposure to, um, to operations and procedures. The fire service has deploy deployed several, <coughs> sorry, we've also received new equipment such as thermal imaging cameras, automotive external defibrillators and hydraulic rescue equipment amongst other things which, um, when put into use, is providing a response and uh, a life-saving capability. And these have already been proven to be crucial tools when responding to emergencies. Other recent equipment upgrades include a new rescue launch for Owen Roberts International Airport, a refurbished launch for Charles Coconnell Airport, and a new lifeboat in Waverness which is going to be utilised for inshore rescue throughout Grand Cayman. The purpose of these resources is to step up local search and rescue capabilities for inshore waters. In addition, a new foam tender for the service at Cayman Brack, and new firefighting personal protective clothing, as well as equipment, other equipment, has been purchased for all fire service personnel. Following a, a, a recent recruitment exercise, 17 Caymanians have now joined the force and another exercise is currently being planned in the near future. Renovation projects have also commenced at several fire stations, including Central Station, West Bay, Frank Sound, Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. I mention all of those advan advancements to say, as the Cayman Islands continues to develop rapidly, the fire service must also continue to advance our operations to ensure that we can maintain steadfast and in discharging our duties to fulfil our mission and protect the community. We are committed and welcome the results of the review and we will use this to build upon our strengths and strengthen our weaknesses in order to achieve the status of becoming a world-class fire service. Thank you. Thanks, David. Um, ready now to open up the floor if anybody has any questions. Sure, I, I have uh, this, by the way. Um, Brent from the Compass, everybody, you all know me. Um, the, I haven't seen the report, but I, could ha I have some questions about the fire service chief. Uh, uh, does the report make any recommendations about um, uh, dual training firefighters for paramedic responses. Um, does it make any uh, uh, statements about the, the need for more ambulances, anything of that nature? I mean, are we adequately staffed with the 
what? adequately staffed maybe with the firefighters, but what about the emergency response as far as the ambulance goes? Does it look at that at all? It didn't look at that, no. Um, it didn't? No. Okay. Um, in that case, let me get one more in. Um, as far as the training for domestic fire, do you feel satisfied that the, the guys and, and men and women that you have right now uh, are adequately trained to do um, a more urban type of firefighting given that we have all these tall buildings coming up around uh, Grand Cayman nowadays? Are, are they adequately trained to go into an 8, 9, 10 story building and, and put out fires, do you think, or is that an area where you need to um, focus a bit more on? Um, I believe before my arrival, uh, there was actually um, training officers came down from the USA specifically to train the fire officers in high-rise building firefighting. And this, this has continued uh, since my arrival. So that's been in-house training. Um, but we're, we're very aware of the uh, buildings that are coming online within the Cayman Islands. And we're reviewing the whole training pr process at this time. And that is one of the topics which we're looking at to uh, enhance our training in that area. Morning, gentlemen. Wendy CNS. Um, obviously, we haven't seen the report, so it's kind of difficult to ask uh, sensible questions. Um, the one thing I would that does jump out at me, though, is obviously you're changing the standards, training standards and development standards of staff you're talking about. Wasn't one of the really big issues when you came, Mr. Hales, that, that obviously there were people were very disappointed that there wasn't a Caymanian that could have um, stepped up to the plate? Um, does this not put succession planning back a bit because you're going to have to retrain all of your senior firefighters that would have been ready to take over from you, if you like, the people that would have presumably that you've identified as your successor? How much, so what does that mean in terms of a Caymanian replacing you? How long are we looking now? Um, well, first of all, we're actually going to be retraining the, the staff. What we're going to be doing is recording the the uh, training procedures and processes in, in a different way, um, which is which is now used on the aviation side. We're just extending that to the domestic side. So the actual uh, operations which which are carried out on the domestic side are all there. We're just going to be um, recording what 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 they're doing and um, ensuring that they're brought into line with a with a recognised standard, which can be used across the board for both services. Um, with regards to succession planning. Um, it's been highlighted that out of the senior management team of, of six, uh, there is only one of those positions held in a permanent on a permanent basis. The other five are, are acting roles. Um, so we we obviously need to look at that and bring people into into a regime where they can be um, identified and trained to carry out those roles in the future. Morning, Mr. Over, you were supposed to be immediately replaced by a Kimanian. That was the the whole issue, if you remember, Mr. Basdeo. After well, I, I prior, remember, since yeah. I wasn't there at the time. If you remember, the premier had said some pretty dramatic sure. things about he couldn't believe that we didn't have a Kimanian to head up the fire service, etc. But what I would say is that the ministry is very focused on strengthening the senior leadership team in the fire service, uh, making sure we have the right pe persons there to do the jobs. Uh, and therefore, the, the port and the review has uh, given us a very clear focus for developing the capability of that senior team, and that is a first order priority. Um, I can't comment on how long that will take, but certainly it's an area of, of, of extreme focus for us to make sure we have the, the strong leadership needed to ensure the report and review is fully implemented and we build that capability for the long-term success of the fire service. Morning, Joe Avery, Cayman 27. Um, just wanted to see if you could tell us about these officers that are receiving training over, uh, overseas. Uh, where are they at? How many are they? And uh, what kind of you know roles are they playing for their uh, host departments? Um, we send officers to the States and, and the UK, uh, mainly the ones that go to the UK at this time uh, for the aviation departments. So if anybody gets uh, initial training, uh, we do types of training which is called initial, so it's um, where they actually uh, receive training for the first time. When that happens, they go to the UK f to that. Um, and then whilst they're there, uh, depending on the role, they can be sent to a place like Manchester Airport, uh, where they will um, 
be seconded to the fire service there for, for a period of time, which will give them exposure in a, at a, a very busy um, operational fire station on one of the largest airports in the UK. And we also send fire office to, officers to the USA for operator training, um, for the fire prevention team go to the USA as well to carry out their, get, uh, get their qualifications in fire safety. What kind of, what kind of insights uh, came out of the uh, confidential survey? You know, you said 60% responded. What was the feedback from the people in the service as to what they needed to do to grow? Um, so what do you mean by what, what they need to do to grow? You know, like, uh, you know, when you surveyed them, what were the responses? Um, well, the, the responses are, are in the report, which is, which is going to be coming out shortly. Um, was it, as I say, I didn't survey them. The survey was done by PwC. Um, uh, and just to, to take it back, uh, I was uh, about a year ago. There was that uh, that incident in West Bay. Has anyone been uh, suspended or disciplined in relation to that? And who was the second passenger? Well, the vehicle the vehicle accident. Yeah, the West Bay one where they clipped the bicyclist. The second passenger of of the fire vehicle. That was not fire service personnel. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't the fire service personnel. Was that a relative of that person? Um, not sure. Uh, you're you're on a three-year contract, uh, t th which expires February 2019. Yes, that's correct. Okay, are are you planning on staying? Do you do you need to stay to implement the rest of this report? Do you have any ideas? Uh, I haven't discussed that yet with the with the ministry. Oh, uh, da Mr. Dr. Dax, uh, is he hanging around or what? I mean, what you know, you said the fi the fire department needs to shore up its leadership service, but you have five of, I think he said five of six in acting roles at the top management, and the chief fire officer is, is has a year left on his contract, and we don't know if he's staying. That's a conversation that we'll have with Chief Hales at some point in the very near future. The report itself um, doesn't call for the chief to be part of the implementation process. But as I said, the ministry's focus is making sure we have the right persons for those jobs uh, to make sure that the entire service can grow, uh, become more effective and more efficient. Um, those uh, recruitment plans uh, and other plans to make sure that that team is, is correct um, is very much part of our focus. Has a few other random questions about operations. Nine one one is the fire service in plugged into nine one one now. Or are you all communicating on the same frequency of ev of everyone else? How's that been addressed? Um, yeah, I mean the fire service is is plugged into nine one one. The control isn't uh, hasn't moved yet to nine one one fire service control. That's still in place at Central Fire Station, but within the next few months, the all the processes should have been in place for fire control to actually be incorporated into 911. Yeah, but at the, I, I'm sure you know the issue, but the, 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 the fact that they weren't being dispatched by 911, like mm -hmm. everyone else, police, ambulance, that's, they're now being dispatched by, by calls to 911? Yes, calls go to 911, and then 911 dispatch the fire service through our control. Okay. And, but they're just, they, they still have, what, what do they still have at the airport? Operation. Uh, you said that they haven't been moved over to 911, right? I'm not sure I understood. Right. So a call goes into 911. 911 receive the call and pass it to fire control. Fire control call out the fire station. Okay, I'm not sure what's changed then. Isn't that the way they were doing it before? This was identified as sort of a communications problem in previous mm -hmm. reports on the fire service. Yeah. Has it changed? No, it's going to be changing in the near future. Okay. Do we know a few months? Do we know when? Uh, well, we, we're in, in uh, talks with uh, DPSC at 911. They have to do some training for their staff um, because at the moment the staff are trained in police and AMS call out systems. So their staff need to be, or are being trained at this time to incorporate fire as well. Once that's complete, the change will take place. Also, uh, one more question. Sorry, Wendy. With the o with the overtime issue, um, is that straightened out now? That you you said you hired 17 new firefighters. Is it are there enough staff now that that the overtime problems have kind of gone away, or are you still having to fill some shifts on on the overtime pay? Um, we we still have to fill some shifts with overtime pay. Approximate cost yearly. 
last year it was about $2 million. Um, over the years, we've had quite a lot of reports about morale amongst the rank and file and stuff, and that you know they've not been happy about some of these issues regarding overtime, regarding <coughs> holiday and, and benefits and things like that. Also, the su the succession planning and the acting. It, it seems as though these things are not yet being tackled. I mean, I'm just wondering, you you know, obviously you were brought in to to deal with this, and in particular, like getting, you know, the the, the fire service the, the the staff issues sorted out. I mean, what do you feel that you've done since you've been here in that department and with this succession planning, given five out of six top management are acting and not being given the proper jobs? Is this helping morale? Is What would you say? Well, uh, let me jump in there for, for a second. I, I think it's important, it's important to recognize that um, these issues are, are, are long-standing issues. Uh, yes, we accept that. Um, and certainly over the past few years, or since the chief has been here, there have been some positive steps made to ensure that those issues are being addressed. And you know, there's some great successes um, that he's accomplished in, in this role. The, re the review itself gives us a very clear focus for making further positive changes. And as I noted in my remarks, uh, certainly the minister has really pushed for the, the budget and the emphasis given on the Department of the Reforms to make sure we're getting this, the, all those issues tackled. So we have a plan to do so. Um, it's, a, it's not a, a short-term fix. Uh, we know that there are some deep issues that will take time to address. And that's our commitment to the fire service. We spoke to them yesterday, and I think that they were encouraged to hear about the, the steps that are being taken. They see that the plan is, 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 is going to be in place. Um, and we have a very clear idea of how to address these issues. So over the next two years, as we uh, go through the various pieces of the, of the, the review and the steps as I outlined, um, we will make sure that we are reporting on those, on those progress, but we're, we're, we're certainly going to show how, how much we're committed to this process and therefore, uh, as I said, improve the fire service. I was, I was multitasking and trying to take notes. I didn't come away with a clear number, and you may have said it, uh, so my apologies, but how many of these uh, uh, officers are being seconded overseas? I just wanted to make sure I, I noticed it wasn't in my notes. Uh, it varies throughout the year. So at, at this present time, there's two people seconded overseas who come back today, um, but that the, the courses and length of time they're away will vary throughout the year. Um, last I heard there was some efforts to remediate mold in the in the fire stations are the, is that done now um, is there any plan in the budget and I just don't recall from looking at it to, to have a new fire station anywhere we've, we've looked at, um, at various things around that but there's no plan in the current budget to have a new fire station yeah there was there was a, a big survey done carried out by hazard management uh, when the, when it was mentioned about mould, uh, there wasn't any significant mould found in any of the stations. However, since then, uh, the air conditioning systems have been worked on and upgraded in, in most of the stations. And I have one for uh, Dr. Dax uh, specifically. Um, is this uh, part of Project Future at all? Is, is Does this have a tie into that? That's to be the, uh, you know, 53 projects that the civil service came up with. Is, is this one of those, does this have a link with Project Future? I don't, I don't recall any of the E&Y recommendations picking up on any of this stuff. Some of these things were highlighted back in the efficiency review in 2010. So for example, the amalgamation of the domestic call center to 911 um, that Brent was asking the chief about was a recommendation that was made then and like he said, it's nearly finished. So Five staff from the fire service transitioned over to 911 between May and August of last year. They've undergone training on the 911 side, um, and they should be, I would think, fully functional within, like he said, the next couple of months. But in terms of E and Y, from an efficiency standpoint, there I don't remember anything being identified. Final question, sorry. We always have to ask this public interest. How much did the review cost? We spent a total of um, 84,000 CA on a review. <coughs> it's 
So if that's all everybody has, then we'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us today.